What is up, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and we're here for episode six, episode six, maybe seven, of Jaguars training camp reaction, review, and news. Today we got news about Quincy Williams and how his training camp has gone thus far. We have Doug Marone speaking on Quincy Williams a little bit, and how did the offense do today, and how did the defense do today? Did they both have good good days at practice today, or was one better than the other? You're going to have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. But before this video gets started, I want to know in the comment section down below, how many wins do you think the Jaguars will get in 2019? And before you do that, make sure you drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop a video every single time Jaguars training camp goes down, so you won't want to miss it. I keep you updated in Jaguars training camp news. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into that video. So our first piece of news is a continuation of something we said in a prior Jaguars training camp reaction new review and news video. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how hard that is to just say all the time. I literally had to take three takes of the intro to say Jaguars training camp reaction review and news. But anyway, this was in one of my other episodes of Jaguar training camp reaction review and news. We talked about D.D. Westbrook and D.J. Chark emerging as Nick Foles' favorite targets and emerging really as the two best receivers uh, at training camp thus far. They've been dominant. They've been making plays. Anything that you see on social media of a wide receiver making plays, it's always DJ Chark or DD Westbrook. So it's looking like these two guys are going to be making plays all season long, especially if Nick Foles can just deal them the football and they should be making incredible plays. Speaking of incredible plays, here's one of DJ Chark's catches today. DJ Chark looks locked in and focused to be a good wide receiver for the Jaguars this season. And to show that his rookie year, it was just a little bit about circumstance. You know, no one on the Jags had a great year in 2018. We can't be judging on him too hard uh, off of that season. And there still was some flashes that he could be a good player during the 2018 season. There was just, I think the bad outweighed the good in that situation. But now it looks like Chark's kind of coming to his own with a new quarterback, a new system. Maybe this is the year DJ Chark breaks out and shows why he was worth the second round draft pick. And how about one more piece of DJ Chark news before we move on. He was announced as the first team kick returner today. He took first team's reps with the kick returning uh, team on special teams and he was the kick returner. Now, usually I like my kick returners to be guys that aren't going to be playing a pivotal part on offense or defense. You know, a guy that is kind of expendable. Like, I mean, if he gets hurt, I mean, it sucks because we lose our kick returner, maybe like our fourth string corner or fifth wide receiver. But, you know, that's okay. We still have other guys that could fill in the void. You know, DJ Chark is a little skinny. You know, he doesn't, he put on some weight during the offseason, so I've heard, but he's still kind of a skinny, awkward looking wide receiver. So, you know, in those open field returns, maybe he's going to get lit up, and I just hope he doesn't get hurt because he's kind of like a string bean running out there. But all shouts out to my guy, DJ Chark. I hope he does have a good season this year. And if he is going to be returning kicks, I hope he returns at least two to the house this season. And speaking of training camp standouts, there's probably not been a single person that has stood out more in the first couple days of training camp than this guy, Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams was the Jaguars' third round draft pick. The Jags had no idea what they were getting out of him. At least, you know, the Jags, and so, you know, I'm going to take that statement back. The Jags definitely had an idea what they were doing because, you know, they had their scouts locked and loaded to get this guy. But it's kind of showing that the Jags fans, you know, if we were pissed that we drafted him because he wasn't on all these big boards, you know, now we're kind of getting a little greedy. We're kind of getting like, oh, our scouts did a good job getting in this Quincy Williams guy. Doug Marone already said that he... Uh, is the fastest guy on the field, you know, and that's a linebacker, that's a linebacker you're saying that about, and he's a, he's a stack dude, he's a big dude, so, you know, seeing him fly around the field, it's kind of like Telvin Smith, man, and he's kind of, he's a little bigger than Telvin Smith, but, you know, it's kind of like the same deal, you know, bigger guys that are really good sideline to sideline linebackers, and if this draft pick ends up hitting, we need to praise at least the scouts on that one for finding Quincy Williams and knowing that that was a good selection for the Jaguars. It's very exciting to see guys that you really haven't heard too much about, you know, prior to the camp, you know, do really well. And I, Quincy Williams is one of those guys, and he's been probably the most major standout out of any Jaguar player thus far in training camp. And you just love, love to see that. 
Next up, we got a bit of safety news, a bit of Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson news. Today, Ronnie Harrison met with the media, and somebody asked the obvious question, how do you feel that you and Jared Wilson will do as a safety tandem this year? And he had a great answer, and it gives you a little bit more confidence about these two safeties heading into 2019. Well, I think we do a great job. You know, both of us are kind of heady guys. You know, we play above the neck. You know, um, we're very smart. We communicate well together. Um, kind of got the similar tools that we both can come and cover down on the tight ends or in the slot. Um, can roam in the middle of the field. So I think we'll, we'll pair well together. You know, and if nothing else, if these guys aren't necessarily your favorites or the best safeties in the league, they have that confidence. They seem like they're kind of walking and talking, you know. They need to have that swagger. And it's hard not to have that swagger when, you know, you have probably the most swag defense in the league. That's the most white thing I've ever said on a YouTube video. But we have the most swag in the league, and Jared Wilson and Ronnie Harrison are going to be feeding off that energy. I kind of was saying that during my safety outlook video that it's going to be hard for these two to not succeed just because of the you know the people that are around them all these leaders all these trash talkers like everybody around them is going to make them better and it truly looks like that is the case with Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson and just based off this 15 second interview I'm even more excited to see what they can do in 2019. The defense shines and the offense does not. That was the storyline of training camp today. There was a point in camp, those that were there reported that the defense was giving the offense such a hard time that Doug Marone said, all right, defense, go home, offense, you stay back, and let's keep practicing. Like, that's two things. That's two things that could, that's two things, two things can do that to you. You know, the thought of that. I had three fingers up because my thumb snuck in there. But there's two things that that rumor can do to you, or that, you know, report can do to you. One, it can show, hey, this Jaguar defense is elite, you know, one of the best in the league. Of course they're going to struggle. You know, that, that just speaks volumes to how good our defense is. Or thing number two, you might think it's a dumpster fire, you need to blow it up, this Jaguar team's going 4-12 and and this offense again can't contribute, Nick Foles wasn't who we thought he was. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Y'all need to chill out. <laughs> that, that's how Twitter is, though. I had to blow up because, you know, I had to had to shout out you know the twitter people with the bad takes it's mostly facebook too it's the facebook bad takes guys but you know people need to calm down about this i don't think it's necessarily a case of this defense being so dominant that they just couldn't handle it i do think that there's still some things on this offense that need to be worked out and i think you know with the new system this defense obviously you know is it's been around todd wash you know basically all these guys like their whole stint in jacksonville they've been around todd wash you know you got john day phil lupo who you know nick Foles knows really well but the rest of this offense doesn't you know this offensive line struggled against our front four and it was mccray demetrius mccray who i completely forgot about like completely completely forgot about him and then you have freaking calais campbell marcel darius and Avery Jones those were the four that were just dominating our offensive line and that's not even our four best defensive linemen you know it kind of it, it makes me worried about the offensive line more than anything it doesn't really make me worried about this whole offense it has me a little bit worried on that offensive line but you also have to think too guys like Jaywan Taylor hasn't came in to start yet and Cam Robinson's still on the sidelines nursing his injuries so maybe when those guys come back these you know 11 on 11s could be a little bit closer but until then, I think that, yeah, they're going to struggle because this offensive line is not built and it's not the best offensive line they can have. So I wouldn't read too much into that. I think it's more of just an offensive line thing. But the fact still remains that the offense struggled, the defense shined. And finally, to end the video, why not some Jeff Swain news? It's not even really Jeff Swain news. It's Jeff Swain getting clowned on when Nick Foles threw him an absolute dot in the end zone. But... Mr. Jared Wilson was out there and made a play incomplete and the Jaguars defense did the most Jaguar defensive thing in the world. Take a look at this video. And they 
they are still that cocky Jaguar defense that we all know and love. I thought that that would be a good video to end things on a little bit of a happy ending to Jaguars training camp, in which case for the defense was a really good day, but for the offense, definitely a bit of a struggle. And that was Jaguars training camp reaction review and news episode 6 or 7, not too sure. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to so get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.